What's up YouTube? I'm Yuri with City Out Basic Training. So today I'm going to show you how to do your air brake inspection. I'm going to try to do it with as little edits as possible. Now you can find us on Instagram at City Out Basic Training. Uh, you can also check out our website SoCalCityOutSchool.com and if you like what you see you can also buy us a copy at City Out Basic Training. So I'm going to start out regardless of what the examiner says with my air brake inspection. So they might go through and give you a full on explanation of how they want you to do whatever it is they want you to do. Whether it be in cap, outside pre-trip inspection, or air brakes. At some point when you guys are inside, you've done your light check and everything's gone good, they'll have you do your, uh, you, you guys will come inside and do either air brakes or in cap. Regardless of where they have you start, we'd like to start with air brakes first. So you'll tell the examiner, I'd like to start with my air brake inspection first. Most likely they'll be good with it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is put on my seat belt. Well, I put it on, I'm gonna check it. I'm gonna make sure that I explain to him that it's properly mount secure, it's not broken, loose, and missing. All the hardware is present, it's not ripped, cut, or torn. It is adjusted to me, and it does latch and unlatch properly. Now, I have a primary and secondary, so I'll let them know that I have a primary and secondary air gauge. They usually have either a P or an S, or a one and two, or you have one gauge with two needles. I'm gonna ask permission to use the primary air gauge only for the purpose of these tests. Most likely they'll say yes. Then I'll go ahead and jump into doing a safe start. Now I'll say the word safe start, so that way he knows what I'm doing. And how do you do a safe start? We're gonna go ahead and put, check that it's in neutral. Make sure that the brake is applied. And I'll go ahead and turn the key. While I turn it on, I'll mention that the ABS light is on and it turned off. As soon as all of my gauges turn off, I'm gonna go ahead and start the truck. Now, since I'm doing my air brake inspection first, the first thing I'm gonna do is explain to them that I wanna make sure that my truck cuts out correctly. It should cut out no greater than 140 uh, PSI. So I'll, make, I'll explain to them, the first thing I'm gonna do is my cutout, making sure that it cuts out no greater than 140 PSI. Now I'm gonna do that. Right now the truck tanks are full, so I'm gonna go ahead and pump it down under 100 PSI, preferably at 75, and go ahead and jump into my cutout. I'm gonna go ahead and rev the engine between 1100 and 1500 RPMs and then wait for the cutout. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here I got time, it's clear to see. Okay, usually we don't go by that sound because it could be the neighbor's truck that's going off if you're at the DMV. So what I'll wait for is for the needles to stop moving, to stop rising. So my truck did cut out, it cut out at 136 PSI. Now you got to be within 3 PSI more or less, so you try to be as exact as possible when you're re reading the air gauge. My truck cut out 136. This is a good test because it did not cut out greater than 140. So my cutout is done. Now I'm going to go ahead and move into my applied leak test. I'll give them the purpose or the reason for the test. Now the purpose of the test is to ensure that I do not lose more than 3 PSI in one minute. This is a class B straight truck. If it was class A, it would be four PSI. One more for the, tra the trailer. We're doing class B today. That's three PSI in one minute. So I'll ask permission. Would you like for me to chalk the wheels or can I place the vehicle in low gear? Most likely they'll allow you to put it in low gear, which I'm gonna do now. I'll go ahead and shut the truck off and turn the key back to auxiliary. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I've already explained the purpose of the test, which is to not lose more than three PSI in a minute. Now I'm gonna go ahead and release the brakes. I'm gonna let the air pressure settle. While the air pressure is settling, I'm gonna ask permission to use my phone to keep the time. So I'm gonna grab my one minute, which is set, and I'll put it where we can both, me and the examiner, see it. My needle stopped rising, so I'm gonna go ahead and step on the brake pedal now. I'm gonna let them know that we're at 105 PSI. Now, I use both my feet because my legs aren't so good. So I'm gonna hold it with both feet 
I'm going to make sure that nothing moves. I don't move. The brake pedal does not move and I'm still at 105 and I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and start my time now. Okay, I've hit my one minute. One minute has passed and I'm gonna repeat myself and say that I am still at 105 PSI. Now this is a good test because I did not lose more than three PSI in one minute. Now I'll ask permission if he wants to come over, he or she would like to come over and see the, the reading on the air gauge just to make sure that I'm correct. Then I'm gonna ask permission to remove my foot off the brake pedal. Is it okay that I remove my foot? Most likely they'll say yes. Now, if they did say no, are, are you sure you want to do something? Then most likely you did something incorrect and you might want to start all over. So I went, I'm going to go ahead and continue. Now, my next test is my lower warning. And this is why I put it in auxiliary earlier so I don't have to mess with it. My truck's already on. I'm going to go ahead and move into my lower warning test and give the purpose or the reason. Now, the purpose of this test is to make sure that my warning light tone at, or, or buzzard comes on between 55 and 75 PSI. Then I'll let them know when I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start now. <laughs> 70 PSI. So on some trucks, the air pressure might build back up, but I am at 70 PSI when the, when the sound came on. So this is a good test because my warning light and tone buzzer came on between 55 and 75 PSI. Now the next test I'm gonna do is my spring brake valve pop-out test. Now the purpose of this test is to ensure that my valve pops out between 20 and 45 PSI, but no lower than 20. I'm gonna go ahead and start that test now. 28 PSI so my valve popped out at 28 PSI and this is a good test because my valve popped out between 20 and 45 PSI but no lower than 20 PSI so now I'm gonna go ahead and refill the tanks or take the truck back to cutout and I'll mention that I'm taking it back to cutout so I can perform the two-way brake check I'm gonna go ahead and do a safe start making sure my truck is in neutral and mention that I'm doing a safe start the brake is applied I am in neutral and I'll just start the truck. ABS light is turning on and it turned off. Now I'll go ahead and rev it between 11 and 1500 RPMs and take it back to cutout. Okay, so my truck cut out, the tanks are now full. I won't mention the PSI at this point because we already explained that the cutout is working properly. I'll just let them know that my cutout, my truck is cut out and it's ready to go for the next test, uh, which is a two-way brake check. So we're gonna start by checking the parking brake and the service brakes. I'll start with my parking brake and let them know the first test I'm doing is my parking brake, making sure it is working properly. I'm gonna go ahead and place the vehicle in low gear and attempt to move the truck Okay, so this is a good test. My, par my parking brake is working properly and my truck did not move forward. The next test is the service brakes. So the purpose of this test is to ensure that my service brakes are working properly. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the vehicle in low gear, release the brakes, and I'll step on the brake. I'm gonna move forward about 15, 20 feet at five miles per hour with my hands at three and nine. And then I'll go ahead and step on the brake to make sure they're working properly. Okay, so my service brakes are working properly and, and 
they stopped my truck when they were supposed to. Also, my truck did not pull to the left or the right. If it did move to the left or the right, that could indicate something's wrong with my brakes, maybe being out of adjustment, or I have a flat tire or a low tire, or I could possibly have something wrong with my suspension. So this is a good test. Now from here, you're gonna go ahead and move into your in-cab inspection. On the in-cab inspection, I do have an, I believe I do have another video for class B. You can follow it on the playlist or you can uh, continue watching this video. So I'm gonna go ahead and move into my in-cab, starting with my mirrors, making sure that they are properly mounted secure. They're not broken, loose, and missing. All the hardware is present. They're not cracked or pitted in any way. Um, and they are adjusted to me, the driver. The next thing I'm gonna check is my windshield. I'm gonna make sure my windshield is properly mounted secure. It's not broken, loose, or missing. All hardware is present. It's not cracked or pitted in any way. There's no illegal stickers obstructing my view. I'm also gonna check to make sure that the weather seal or the, wi the windshield seal is properly mounted secure. It is not dry rotted or cracked and it will not allow any kind of leaks to come into the cab. Now I'll move into my wipers and check my wipers and the blades, making sure they're properly mounted secure. They're not broken, loose, or missing. All hardware is present. Those blades are not dry rotted or cracked and they're firmly pressed against the glass. I'm also gonna make sure that I have a little bit of washer fluid, you know, make sure that that one's working properly and we can see that it is. I do have washer fluid and it is working properly. Now I'm gonna move into my gauges. I'll start with my oil pressure gauge, which is, it should be reading between 40 and 60 PSI and it's working properly. We'll move into the water or the coolant and making sure that my water temperature should be between 180 and 200. It's gradually rising at this point, so we know that that one's working properly. I do have a digital voltmeter and it should be reading between 12 and 14 volts. Right now I have 14.1 so that we know that those batteries are working properly, my, my meter is working properly. If you have DEF at this point, you'll, you'll explain that, you'll check your DEF gauge. I do have half a tank, that's more than an eighth of a tank, which is a requirement. And we know that that one's working properly. Now we'll move into the primary and secondary air gauges and we know those are working because we just showed them there, brake inspection. From there we'll move to the left signal point to it make sure it's working properly we'll go to the right signal that one's working properly I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my lights so I can check my high beams and that one is what also working properly now I'll go ahead and check my four ways so my emergency lights are both working properly from there we're gonna go ahead and move into the horn now my horn is working properly if you had an air horn you go ahead and hit that one or if you have the button on here for your, for your highway horn um, but this one does not have one now we'll move to the heater defroster, make sure I'm, I just turn it all the way up to heat onto the windshield. And we can hear that it's working properly. Next I'll move to my fire extinguisher, making sure it's properly mounted secure. It's not broken, loose, and missing. All hardware is present. It's not cracked or leaking. Um, the needle is charged in the green. It is up to date and it does have the safety pin in place. I also have three reflective triangles and spare electrical fuses that are located in the toolbox in the back of this truck. Now those are all properly mounted secure. They're not broken, loose, or missing. All hardware is present. They're not cracked or missing or anything. They're in good working condition back there. So this concludes my in-cap and my air brake inspection. Um, if you like the video, give us a like. Like I said, if you got anything out of this, you're welcome to buy us a copy. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at CDL Basic Training. You can look us up on our website at SoCalCDLSchool.com. I'm Yuri and thanks for watching.